Hey everyone, welcome back to another one of these interview series on, on my YouTube channel here. Uh, today I've, I've got an interview with uh, Harold Allman. And uh, Harold is, uh, is someone who had emailed me uh, because he had some success with, uh, after he found, found Simple Programmer. And, uh, and I haven't really shared uh, too many of the success stories of, of, of someone who's, who's kind of gone through through the material and and kind of the blog and stuff and, and has has really had uh, some kind of uh, you know big career changing and, and, and life changing success from that. So uh, Harold uh, had emailed me and 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 let me know about the success he was having and I thought that was uh, that was pretty cool. So I thought, hey, let's let's do an interview and let's let's talk to to Harold about uh, about what you know what what happened and and how how things went and and uh, yeah. So uh, so welcome, Harold. Thanks thanks for doing this. Hi, John. Thanks for uh, having me uh, on your show. I'm a software developer in uh, Dallas, Texas. I started uh, programming over uh, 30 years ago with uh, assembly language, and then I moved on to uh, C, C++, and Power Builder. And then I ended up at a, a company doing uh, a lot of uh, Power Builder work, and uh, I was uh, getting worried because Power Builder was becoming uh, less popular. So one day my uh, manager calls me into uh, – into a room and it's just like, well, what's going on? Yeah. So she says, Harold, um, we've got these uh, 80 uh, distribution points in our uh, computer network with 80 different databases and we're, we're centralizing all the data and we want to copy all this data out to these 80 databases and it's going to be do be done with uh, Java. And so she said, are you interested? And I said, yeah, I'm not interested in uh, uh, doing that. So I got this, uh, this Java project to uh, work on, which was great. It was a uh, new development. So, uh, and they thought it would take about uh, six months. And then after about three months, it started getting a lot more complicated and it expanded in scope. And so um, I got another developer. So suddenly I was like a team lead. It wasn't a very big team, but uh, he was helping me with this uh, translation uh, project. So then we were moving along and then we needed a PL SQL developer because we were doing mainly uh, SQL and Java. Yeah. And so I got a third person to uh, manage and you know lead. And then so we worked on that whole project for uh, about a year. And uh, the tool worked great and I designed it so it was, it was fast. Um, it was fairly uh, robust. If one of the uh, uh, applications went down, it didn't take down the, the whole system. So right. uh, it was protected a bit from uh, failures. And uh, it also monitored uh, the distribution of the data so that when uh, uh, like one of the distribution points uh, wasn't completing, it would uh, alert us um, with, with an email saying, you know, something's wrong, go look at that. So that, that was a great project to uh, work on. Unfortunately, the company wasn't very big. And at the end of the project, I was let go and I had to find a position elsewhere. So after about three months, I got a job with uh, uh, another airline company and again it was a new development and it was as a contractor so I was earning a, a higher rate and so I liked that except for the two-hour commute that I was doing every day that was oh, ouch. yeah yeah so I was listening to a podcast at that uh, at that time and then uh, after about a year and a half they uh, they they merged with uh, another airline and they reorged and they tore the group apart and I was let go again. And I'm thinking, wow, okay, so I've got like about two and a half, three years of new development. I learned Java, I learned Spring, I learned Spring integration. I should have an easy time getting a job. Well, I tried to get a job as a, a contractor and, and couldn't get anything. So I broadened my horizons. Okay, I'll take a, a job as an employee at a, at a lower pay scale. That's, that's okay, I'll get a job. And I was looking for a senior position. Uh, couldn't get a job as a senior and then started just looking for like a regular uh, developer position and nobody was even calling me uh, about to come in for interviews and so I was wondering what the heck is wrong and after about uh, six months I talked to a recruiter and he says Harold you know you know you know all this stuff and you're not putting it on your resume yeah so I put everything I knew on my uh, resume even though I wasn't like an expert on all the things so before I was just putting on the things that I knew really well and felt like I was really, really qualified to do. And then I also started looking uh, to improve myself, looking for uh, material on the web. Uh, and what I found was a, a podcast called JavaScript Jabber. So uh, by uh, Charles Maxwood. 
Yep. And so I was trying to pick up a little bit of uh, JavaScript. And then um, when I started watching his uh, podcast, I found out he had another one I like better called Ruby Rogues. Okay. Right. Yeah. And um, I think he had you on one of those two shows at one point, right? Yeah, I've actually I've been on all his his shows. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's yeah, he's yeah. Good at mine now. <laughs> so uh, Ruby Rogues is about Ruby, but he's actually got a number of episodes that are more general in nature, like how to become a better developer. And he was saying, "Well, if you if you just listen to this show, you're in the top one percent, one percent." So um, I was researching topics I was finding on his show and I stumbled into uh, uh, simpleprogrammer.com and, and started reading your articles and I thought uh, they were great. So uh, one of the ones I, I thought, you know, from a teaching perspective, you were saying people don't want a, a, a thousand page book on JavaScript. They want uh, to get going, give them the essential details, show them how to do it, give them examples and get going. And when I saw that, I thought, wow, this guy's really smart. I need to keep, you know, reading what he's uh, blogging about. And uh, I also started watching your uh, your uh, videos on uh, YouTube. And yeah. some of the other favorites uh, blogs that you've done or videos are why comments are stupid. I read that and go, wow, I need to refactor my code. So about um, three months ago, I started uh, doing Top Coder and uh, the Euler Project. Okay, and, yeah. Uh, solved uh, about 33... Uh, no, at that time, it was like 31 Euler project uh, problems, and I thought it was great. You know, my my functions were short, and I had put in comments, and I thought they were easy to read. And then I read your blog and what you did, and I thought, oh, man, I could, like, improve my code. So about three weeks ago, I went on a recoding binge, and I'm still still doing that, just going through these 33 different problems and refactoring the code and refactoring the code. And I also bought the book uh, that you recommended, uh, Code Complete. And oh yes, yeah. Working my way through that—that's a pretty big uh, uh, book to uh, to go through. Oh, the the other thing I forgot to mention was ugh, I used to be a language guy, and uh, I learned Latin in 2010. It took about uh, 20 months to do, and th this book has no English in it. So, um, oh, interesting. Yeah, you know how you say on your, your podcast, you you say just go out and code, go out and do it. Yeah. It's, book you have no choice there's no English so you learn Latin the hard way but the good thing is after you learn Latin the hard way after five years of reading this well I finished about three and a half years ago I can go back and read this and I'm almost at the the same level whereas people who do the different approach grammar translation they forget what they did because three quarters of the book that they use to learn Latin uh -huh. it's in English, right so instead of instead of like reading about how to do Java or how to do JavaScript or Spring or the whatever technology stack you're on. What I learned from that book was to go actually do it, right? Yeah. So that's what I did with Project Euler. Also got into Top Coder, which I found through you. Actually, I found both of those, I think, through uh, you, which was uh, great. And I found your stuff, your old stuff. I tried to find your code and it's so oh, old. Yeah. Find your code on Top Coder, you know, it's gone. But I saw your rating and everything and uh, I did one, uh, my first top coder, I did it, and I got my rating. It wasn't great, but you got to understand that the people who are doing this are like um, just a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of the, the coders out there. They're probably oh, yeah. the best people doing this. So I wasn't worried that I was like in near the middle of this thing at all. And there are people who are just like, how do I become a red? Oh, for those people who don't know, red is the top level. And I'm like, what are you worried about, guy? You're a yellow. You're like second from the top. And this guy's like, Frank, what do I got to do to get to red? It's like, don't worry about it. You're doing absolutely fantastic. I'm, I'm way below red or, or yellow where he's at. And I'm not worried about it at all, you know. I yeah. think I'm doing uh, just fine. So um, I did it. And then after that uh, top cutter thing, I was like under so much stress. I was like. <laughs> you know, I felt like the Incredible Hulk. It took me like two hours to calm down before the adrenaline cleared from my uh, uh, system. Oh yeah. wow, that, that was an experience. So that's great for job interviews. That, oh yeah, yeah. That's probably as as hard uh, of a job interview or as hard of a test that you're going to find in a job interview. Usually they're easier than that. Sometimes they want to give you a programming test, right? But Top Coder is great for training yourself to uh, solve algorithms.
Oh yeah. Yeah. That's great that you did that. Like the, doing the, the Euler and the top coder, like if you've gone through that, then when you get to a job interview and they give you a problem right. on the whiteboard, like it's, it's like, Oh, this is fun. Like <laughs> I'm glad you gave me this problem because I like doing this kind of stuff. It's like, that's right. yeah, I used to, uh, yeah. I used to be so terrified of, uh, these, uh, uh, programming tests that they would uh, give me. And now I, you know, I might not get it, but there's a pretty good chance I'm going to do, uh, fairly well, you know, answering these, uh, questions that I get during the uh, interview because I've, I've done so many of them. Yeah. So uh, that was a top coder. I just wanted to mention on uh, Project Euler, they have a problem for me, uh, number 89, which is to do with Roman numerals. <laughs> ah, okay, there we go. Yeah. And they've got one for you. Oh, number what's 300. that? You need to do 300. It's uh, protein folding. It's oh, okay. <laughs> nice. nice. Uh, for those people who don't know, uh, John's like into protein. You can see the bodybuilder in the <laughs> photo. So is that you or somebody uh, else? Wait, oh no, that's not me. No, that's not me. Oh, uh, okay. That's, that's, that's Jay Cutler. He, he was like Mr. Olympia. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. I got to meet him and got to get his autograph. So that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah, uh, Euler is a good resource too. It's just such a, it, it's, it, it's interesting. It's kind of fun to do that kind of stuff too. Right. It's like, and, oh, yeah. and then and then you're yeah. like way ahead of so many programmers can't do that and so it's like you know you can go to that interview and like you're you're in the top one percent or or you know even 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 less than that if you if you can actually do these kind of algorithm problems so you know it, it just it, it it really helps you for when you go to for a job interview like to to be able to do that yeah yeah and uh, uh well the problem with it is i get so used to doing it i just want to keep doing it like you you talked about this going on autopilot I got to the point where I could just solve the Euler project one after another, after another, after another. And it's like, okay, Harold, you need to stop and <laughs> go do something else, you know? So I did stop, started my refactoring project, which is uh, still in uh, progress. And that led to me learning uh, GitHub and Git. Okay, yeah. So I was saying, I've got all this code. I don't want to lose it on my PC. So I started backing it up to uh, the cloud. And I thought, well, I'd like to learn Git too. So when I started learning Git, uh, I was like, oh, I can get a GitHub account and push it up to the cloud. So my stuff's up on the the, uh, the cloud, too. So if you just go to GitHub slash uh, Harold Allman, uh, you'll find it. That's the other thing. If you, if you want to market yourself, don't hide behind some weird name like uh, whatever, you know. Um, so I, I use my real name when I'm trying to... Uh, market myself and after doing this for a couple of months i finally showed up like like six months ago i didn't show up on google search now i finally show up i didn't expect this i answered questions on quora and that's the only thing that's showing up right now is i, I my quora posts are, are are showing up on uh on uh google yeah oh so that's good uh another article of yours i liked was the ultimate list of uh programming books okay I, yeah yeah for some reason there it's really uh, helping me uh, choose what books I want to uh, start uh, reading. And like I said, I'm uh, working on, on uh, uh, a couple of books right now, reading those. And then I'm also, I saw your video on uh, Kanban flow. And um, I think I'm going to actually start doing it the way you do because I tend to like go home and then code for three or four hours every night and then I'm like exhausted. <laughs> so right. uh, improving myself, which is recommended by uh, some other guy. Uh, I forgot what his uh Martin Fowler, I think, recommends do that. Recommends doing that, spending three or four hours a, a night uh, improving yourself, and you know, studying uh, your technology stack or whatever you want to work on. So I've been doing that, but with the Kanban Flow, it's got that pom Pomodoro uh, timer. Exactly. So yeah. I've started using that. So after forty, like forty minutes, I think you get like a five-minute break just to try and uh, break it up. So I've uh, started using that. Um, what else did we talk about uh, quantity yeah I think we talked about quantity versus quality that was a, another blog post uh, you had right and then oh 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 another one I liked you had you, you talked about um, uh, going to conferences and talking to the speaker all right uh, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. so I've joined the the, the, the local uh, Java users group uh, the cloud computing group and uh, the Scala group so this week has been like really hectic because yesterday they had a two-hour meeting in a Scala group never seen the language before but it was uh, pretty impressive and the night before I went to the uh, Java group and there was a two-hour presentation 
uh, in that. Met a guy, couldn't believe what he said. You know, I had so many problems finding a job uh, here in Dallas. And he said he had lost his job. And in the market right now, within a week, he had two offers. And he was trying to decide which one to pick. Yeah. Says, wow. And he says, I hope you're not going to feel bad. And it's like, well, no, it's great. You, you, you know, you lost the position, but uh, find a job that uh, quickly. Well, you, you know, it, you know, I just have to, I just have to take a moment to like, just uh, to congratulate you on like, I mean, because like so many people, like they, they hear stuff and they read stuff and they do nothing, you know, but you've done yeah. so much like in such a short period of time, like you, like, you know, you, you said that you struggled to get it to, to find a job before, but from this point forward, you're never going to struggle to find a job again. Like, because you're so hireable so much more. I mean, yeah. Like I, I just love that you just like you're like I know nothing about Scala, but I joined a Scala group and went to a Scala. I mean, that's awesome. That is just so yeah. awesome. Like I, oh, yeah, I'm just yeah, like yeah. you know, it just blows me away. Like I, you know, like when I first read your email, I was like, man, this is just so awesome. Cause it's just, yeah, just but you see, see someone applying all this, you know. Um, IntelliJ has a Scala plugin. It's experimental right now. But what so impressed me about the language was not the fact that it, it's highly. Uh, par parallelized. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's it's for massive quick computing. It's just that the guy said, you know, we had this great big Java program and we probably eliminated 70% of the code. I mean, I'm interested in a language that uh, that can do that. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just uh, getting rid of all the the uh, the the uh, and just doing it more efficiently and eliminating most of the uh, of, of the code, so that, that's what I like about uh, about Scala. I looked at Ruby too. Did I solved a couple of the uh, Euler project uh, problems in Ruby just to get a, a taste of that? And sure enough, that the, the solutions were shorter than the uh, the Java. <laughs> yeah, just like, uh, just like Scala. So yeah. no, yeah, yeah it's, it's just great to hear this. I mean, to hear how open minded you are about it. That you're doing all these things, like you know, just and just to see like that to think that you're like. You, you had a very smaller, like the, the power builder and then you went to Java, but now you're expanding in all these different areas and like you're doing things to improve yourself to be like doing the top coder to learn, you know, yeah. becoming, you know, like I can just like this trajectory, like where will you be in like, you know, a year or two years? Yeah. Like, well, I had a awesome. question for you. I had a question for you. Like there's the technology stack is so big for Java and .NET yeah. and there's, all of these, you know, you just can't learn it all. Uh, what do you recommend? I'm, I'm kind of like concentrating on my my core. I want to stay, you know, sharp in Java. I want to learn like two or three more languages, though maybe Ruby and, and Scala. I'm interested maybe in a low-level language like uh, Go or Rust. But I, I don't want to like try and learn everything. Not I'll be in, you know, I won't be an expert in anything. I'll be spread to. Uh, Thin. What do you have any recommendations on that? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> <Excuse. coughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm a big fan of specialization, <coughs> so you should definitely specialize. But but I think you're taking a good approach of getting a very good base first. So like a lot of people get confused when I give this advice because they're like, well, you know, should I specialize? But but then you know, but but what about uh, you know, you you what about being a polyglot and and learning other things? And and my answer really is that. You, you should you should do what you're doing. Like explore. Let's go check out Scala. Hey, let's write a couple of uh, uh, solve a couple of of Euler problems in Ruby. Let's let's like learn these these things. But you can't you don't have the you can't go in depth into all these things. Like by getting a good base, like ex getting exposed to a lot of different technologies, a lot of different things is going to give you a good base and a good wide perspective. But then you need to pick like one thing to start right. with, to just drill right. real deep. Like you want to be the expert in one thing. Right. And then maybe you can build up an expertise in another area, but but you at least want to be like really have fun, something that you that you found that you're going to give real, real deep knowledge. Because the thing is, that's what's going to make you really, really valuable and is going to help your career. Because if you can be like the expert in a particular thing, then, right. then you can write books on that. You can you could go speak at conferences on that. If someone's looking to hire you as a consultant, you can consult for a much higher hour, hourly rate, even when you go out and, and look for a job like you're going to match a perfectly a job description or they're going to be looking for an expert and and you're going to have a lot of you, you could build up a name and credibility um in a smaller area 
first, and then and then you can ha you can sort of expand once you once you've done that. But um, but I definitely you know it, it's a, it's a it's a someone was describing it to me as as a T T model, and there's a book I, I got to get. I think it was I forget what the book was called, but but it, someone had commented this on one of my blog posts, and and it's like this this T model where where the T like you have this base, and then you've got like you know the the T is is the really deep area that you get a very yeah. Uh, specialized yeah. knowledge in yeah yeah I'm kind of searching for that uh, that specialty right now I'm kind of thinking it's going to be middleware or back end that's why I picked translation data as my uh, my blog blog site because that was that's probably going to be the best thing I ever work on a, on my life was this huge translation uh, project oh and the end users were so happy when, yeah. when that happened it, it just uh, it cut down their weights from like two three weeks to like 20 minutes based on uh, the translation uh, times because it was being done uh, uh, manually. But I'm still kind of uh, searching. So it, it might be doing uh, like data translations. I'm not 100% uh, sure, but um, I don't know. Uh, I just had a hard time go uh, to get getting going because at the beginning, I just like I just didn't know what to what to code. I couldn't find a good project to code. And then I found your site. And that led me to Top Coder with all of these weird wacko problems. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> I mean, where do they come up with this stuff? Uh, they're just like really, and it's also less mathematical than um, Project Euler. And then you know the Project Euler, you know when I when I got into those, they were just like interesting to me, and they they like pulled me along, and so I had projects that I was interested in. And if I have a project I'm interested in, I'm going to go solve the problem. So uh, thank you for <laughs> leading me to those uh, two sites. There was another one uh, uh, I might have seen. Oh, I can't remember what it was. But yeah, th those two sites really helped me because the 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 uh, the problems that they were offering were were interesting. They were uh, and they were challenging. So it gave me something to uh, work on, something to sink my uh, sink my teeth in and really practice. And, and it really helped with the uh, Java because you know. Sometimes you just don't write a lot of Java code. There's a lot of maintenance. You're in a lot of meetings, telephone calls, whatnot. Uh, when you do these problems, you're going to be using sets and hash maps and collections. You're going to be converting from integer to characters and whatnot. You're going to be doing it again and again and again and again. Yeah. Pretty soon you're at the point where you can get on top coder and you don't have to go look, look it up in the Java docs on how to do something. Like yeah, you want to reverse the sort. Oh, that's uh, you do. You you know how to do that that type of uh, transformation. Oh Whereas, yeah. Before you're gonna to have to go research it a bit and you know look up and do some research. So the, doing all those little easy quote easy problems, which really aren't that easy, uh, really helps with the just the practice doing it over and over and over. Like I just didn't use many sets before I was using uh, top coder. And yeah. Sets turned out to be half sets just turned out to be really useful in top coder and uh, project Euler. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing how that carries over too, right? <laughs> like yeah. I learned when I first started doing top coder and stuff like that. I mean, I was doing C plus plus, but I learned all the standard template library and all the collections and stuff that I had never used. Yeah. I didn't know about maps and lists. I was doing things a lot of things the hard way, and then and then you know the problems themselves don't necessarily carry over to your to your regular job. But right. but the the use of the collections and just knowing your way around all the collections and how to manipulate strings and how to do all that all of a sudden I was like you know I was writing all this awesome code that like it, my job was so much easier because now I knew oh yeah I could just throw that in a map and we'll just sort that and bam and and you and you're good to go whereas you know a lot of other developers were like how did you know how to do that like how would you do? like it's like well if you've done all these problems and you're so familiar yeah. with collections like there's so there's a really huge value in in, in doing that so yeah I same thing after me just like a couple of weeks on the job I, I was trying to solve a problem and it's just like oh yeah I know how to do that just throw this in a set and uh, do this and that and you know it'll be uh, done and uh, you know I was able to do that because I was doing all this uh, uh, practice after hours at uh, at home yeah Awesome. So um, I'm gonna have to wrap it up here in a second here, but I did want to kind of take the like get, go full circle here. So maybe if you want to talk about real quick, like um, where did you feel that you were like before, you know, um, and oh. then and then where do you how confident do you feel now? Like w at the point, yeah. maybe if you could take us from that journey of yeah. okay, like where you didn't feel like it was hard to find a job, and now how do you feel? Yeah, and yeah. then, and yeah. then how, how does someone? 
go down that path to get from yeah. you know, from where yeah. you started to where you got now? At the beginning, I felt like I was a fairly good programmer, but I felt like there was no way to prove it because the code I had written was proprietary and I couldn't post it online. I feel like I need a portfolio. What do I do to get like a portfolio online so people can see what, I, what I've done? And I felt like, okay, I've got a resume that looks like everybody else's resume that's listing all of the same things. Yeah. Okay. So now I've got a resume that lists more than all of the things that they've got because they, they probably don't have the top coder, they don't have the project Euler, and they probably don't have a GitHub site. And I've got all of that listed on my resume, the rankings, the pos approximate positions or whatnot. And I'm um, trying to get myself so I show up in the, the Google sources uh, uh, searches, but I'm, uh, I'm not there yet. And before, like uh, when I was going to the interviews, this is like, oh, please don't give me a a programming <laughs> test that I have to do on the board. I hate doing that. It's just like, oh, I get like so tense and like, just yeah. like blank out and, and fail them quite often. And now it's just like, oh, okay, this is like, this is going to be an easy top coder usually um, uh, type of uh, test. I've done this. Don't worry about it. I might not get it, but I'm not going to, uh, you know, just bomb on it. I think and I can. I can talk about uh, the solution. Maybe come up with the uh, algorithm and hopefully uh, solve it. I know there's some problems that I, I actually failed. Like I can solve it in one line after doing all this top coder stuff. It's actually there's a solution that you can solve. You can solve this one problem with one line. Oh, the other funny thing is, um, I went. When I was in Top Coder, you know how they have that 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 weird looking applet that you have to get into to oh to yeah yeah and you can go back to the very beginning, oh not the very beginning but you can see the first one that was done, and I went back and looked at Division Two the easy problem and it's just like wait a minute I've seen this problem before I was asked that in the interview <laughs> oh really <laughs> ah that's a hilarious. couple of years ago the guy had gone to Top Coder yeah. he went to the he looked at it and he asked me the question. Fortunately, that one I was able to uh, to uh, do. So, anyways, now I, I just feel like I'm in a lot better position. You know, for those people who are just having a hard time uh, getting a job, I mean, the, the main thing is to, uh, you know, uh, it just started with that that uh, Latin book. You know, five years ago, spend 10, 20 minutes every single day at least uh, learning, yeah. getting better. And then uh, do what you want. Just do something. Uh, for me, it was doing uh, uh, Top Coder and uh, Project Euler and just reading your, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to a simple programmer, reading your blog posts. Uh, I watch uh, all of your videos now as they, uh, as they come out. And, boy, the quality has really gotten a lot better since you've hired a professional Thank to do it. But the old ones weren't bad, you know. But uh, now they're looking really, really nice. So, um, yeah, I mean, go to your – I mean, obviously – go to a simple programmer and uh, absorb the content and, you know, see what uh, uh, you're saying because, you, you know, your advice is uh, really good. And I like how you, you, I can tell that you're answering questions that you're getting from the, uh, the reader. So your, your, your answers are quite pertinent to what people need to, to know in the uh, current uh, uh, job market. And, and also, Hey, if you've got a two hour commute, like I did start listening to uh, podcasts, I mean, just, yeah. Pick one. You, I mean, Ruby Rogues. If even though you're not doing Ruby, they're going to talk about uh, uh, how to. There's, you know, your podcast, how to market yourself, and uh, how to become a better developer. Um, what kind of skills do you need to be a front end developer? They they don't always talk about uh, Ruby. So uh, you know, also listen to uh, uh, podcasts, and of course, go to your uh, article on the uh, books. And pick a couple. Start reading them. Uh, you got the, your your book too. Uh, you can read that. Um, so those are the, the, uh, actions that I think, uh, someone who's having a problems, uh, obtaining a job should, uh, follow something like that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I yeah. appreciate, appreciate you taking the time and I and appreciate, um, all, all, all the glowing endorsements, you know, um, I, I didn't, I didn't expect you to say all that, but I, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, I'm glad that I'm helping, you know, I, I that's, that's my goal with simple programmers to help people. And, 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 and you're helping now too, because like, I mean, I, th I really wanted to get your message out there because, because you, you, you've, you've done like the, like you, you, you took action. So many people don't take action and you've done that. And now it's like, it's just awesome to hear. Like, yeah, I, I would have no problem. Like, I mean, if you came into an interview with me, I would, and you told me like all this stuff you're doing, I'd be like, I don't even need to see your code. You're just hired, man. Like, because, wow. because, because, you know, this is, a, if, if you're learning, if you're doing stuff, if you're like, 
like it's it's the sky's the limit like i'd i'd hire you at the bargain and be like man i'm going to get this benefit of of all the growth that you personal growth that you're going to get is going to help grow my people in my company so um so yeah so it's it's great to hear hear this kind of story and and hopefully i really hope some people that listen to this interview take this to heart and realize like if they're having trouble finding a job to do the kind of thing like to just go out and do stuff like like you're doing and, and take action yeah and, yeah. So. yeah yeah spend some uh time and effort on uh, uh making your uh improving your skill set and uh, especially on marketing yourself do something to make yourself visible to the uh the rest of the world yeah all right harold well thank you thank you again and, all right. uh, and, and definitely everyone check out harold's uh, harold's site at uh, it's uh, translationdata.com right yep yep yeah. all right okay. awesome okay. thanks for having me on the show thank you yeah. all right take all right. care Bye.